Former Ports Commissioner Major John Flowers, whose last day on the job as head of the Belize Port Authority was Tuesday, has opened up about his sudden departure from the post. Flowers cites his reason for choosing not to renew a one-year contract with the Ministry of Transport as professional differences with Junior Minister Edmund Castro. According to Flowers, the Minister of State has repeatedly used his influence to rid the department of past employees and on two occasions instructed the hiring of his children despite the department's financial woes. Flowers spoke by phone with News 5 today and recounted what transpired at BPA over the past two weeks. The situation at the Port Authority actually um, began just shortly after the election in 2012. I think it was in March 2012, when um, Minister Castro um, was um, selected along with Mr. Montero to head the Ministry of Works and Transport. The Port Authority being uh, what it is had fallen under Minister of Transport. And right at the beginning, uh, Mr. Castro made a move to change everyone that um, was there before, including myself. But because of the contract I had, um, that could not be, uh, be done because the contract was still um, valid for another year. And so um, that contract stood fast for a while. However, we've had some bit of difficulties from there onwards um, in the sense that I know he has made um, several moves to try to get me um, fired or kicked out. Never did work out. And finally, I think in April, I think on the whole of Thursday, we had a situation where myself and him had some discussion on the phone in respect to water taxi situation. There was a breach of the water taxi terminal along with the, the Port Street to his village. And under the, the ISPS regulation, that, that breach should not be uh, occurring. And so we had a discussion down there, and it appears that the water taxi um, management at uh, PWD Express had his phone number. And they called him and complained that we were controlling the water taxi schedules and restricting their movements. And so he felt that that shouldn't happen. And he wants for the water taxis to have as much schedule as they want to run. Sometime in around early July, the chairman approached me and asked, and asked for me to create a vacancy for the minister data. And I said, well, I don't really have a, a stop of thought. He said, well, the minister wants to get his data in. I said, all right, I will try to accommodate we went in and we created a slot um, at the vessel documentation desk and put her in there to work. And so he started to work there. And that worked out for a while. And so we continued to do what we guys normally do. And eventually, um, okay, we have this last situation developed on the, the first of uh, February, where, again, the chairperson came and asked me to create a, a slot for the minister's son. And I said, Chairman, I said, we are right now two overstaffed. We established the 70 and I have uh, two extra. And given the financial situation right now with the uh, authority, I said, I simply cannot afford to, to have uh, people wearing it over the establishment because it has to do with revenues, which I'm not collecting with the depressed shipping condition in Belize. Um, I said, I, I lose money. And so there's no other alternative for me to get money to run the department. And I don't want to run a serious problem where I can't pay people. And so he said, well, he said, I will try to see if I could talk to the minister out of it. And that was that Friday. The Monday morning, I got a call from the minister, which was the fourth, saying that, listen to me. I have my son here, and I need to find a job. He's giving me a battery, give me some trouble. I need to find somewhere to put him. I'm not asking you to move mountains. I said, minister, I said, that is not his issue. I said, we just don't have the space. We don't have the means to facilitate the son. He said, well, I'm not asking you that. this time. I'm instructing you to do that, he said. And so, that, thank you very much, and he left. Well, that never did happen. And so the, on Wednesday, the minister came down to the office. And he came in the morning and said, man, he said, you need to work with me. He said, I've been giving instructions on you need to follow it out. And, and, and so I didn't think that you and the African, yeah, I'm going back to Calais and get you moved. And so I said, minister, we have had this discussion before. We talk about this thing. I just simply don't have the vacancy to put your son. Right? And so he did not take that lightly.